Folks, how are we doing today? I have had the pleasure of owning a couple of different Coyote tractors, the CK series and the DK series, so I thought I'd take the opportunity, now that I have a few hours on each one of these, to tell you what I think about them. And maybe which one you should get, the CK or the DK, if you're trying to make that decision. So first, a few more details on the CK. This is a Coyote CK4010 SE. Let's double check, mine's, mine's getting old. Hey, I got that right. Uh, and this is a Coyote DK6010 SE. All right, so these are, well, as I generally do, I get the, the most horsepower within the series. And so the 40 horsepower offering is the most you can get within the CK. The 60 horsepower nominal, I think it's technically like 57.7, but the DK6010, the 60 kind of represents 60 horsepower nominal. Anyway, uh, that's, the, that's the scoop on that one. So you can get smaller engine horsepower variations, a 35 and a 26, and then a, oh, what is it? A 53, 47, 42 in the DK. So you're gonna have other engine options, but they're typically gonna have the same loaders. So whether you get the 26, 35, or 42, or 40, you have the same loader. And same thing with all the different four engine options over here, you still have the same loader. So you have the same hydraulic system, same three point on there, same tires, same machine weight, all that kind of stuff. So those things don't change. And so you can kind of pick your poison there. You're gonna pay, I don't know, maybe two, three, four grand more per engine size that you go up. So take that in consideration. Now, real quick tangent on why you may want more or less horsepower. Of course, less horsepower is gonna be cheaper. So that's a big driver there. More horsepower, if you go from like the 40 or 42 horsepower variant here to the 60, you can definitely run bigger PTO attachments on there, all right? If you're only going from like a 26 to a 35 horsepower, maybe you're gonna run a bigger PTO attachment, like a bigger brush hog on the back or a bigger flail mower, but probably not. When you have a huge variation, what I consider huge, 42 to 60, roughly, horsepower variation, that's really where you're gonna be able to make a, a significant jump, like a foot wider cut, potentially. Uh, another reason you may want more horsepower, a lot of horsepower is if you are at higher elevation or you're dealing with a lot of hills. Hills really rob horsepower when you're under load. So whether you have a bucket full of material or a grapple full of a really, or with a really heavy log or you're grading a driveway going up a hill or pushing snow or whatever it is, those kinds of applications, you're gonna wish you had more horsepower and you need to have weight. These machines are pretty heavy, uh, heavier than like a comparable deer or Kubota. So that does work to your advantage in a lot of cases. But again, if you're carrying more weight up a hill, well, that's gonna put more strain on the engine too. So again, more horsepower is nice to have. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze. And it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Okay, so what do we compare a Coyote CK series to? Well, hard to say, to be honest with you. It's bigger than a John Deere 2038R, but it's smaller than a John Deere 3046R or a 3039R. It's kind of like right in between there. It's closer to the 3039R, but it's, it's just slightly smaller. It's slightly narrower, a little bit smaller tires. Um, but as far as the lift capacities go, the other specs that like show the capabilities of what you can do with a tractor. It's very similar and a lot cheaper. So um, I've kind of been drawn to the Coyote tractors over the last year, year and a half, whatever it's been, mainly because after kind of post pandemic, everything has gone through the roof as far as prices go. And, you know, Deer and Kubota, which I still really like those tractors, but, you know, listening to consumer feedback and everything else, their prices have gotten out of control. You know, for a 4066R, which is one of my favorite tractors, I mean, I'm getting people sending me quotes that those machines are 80 grand for a tractor, a 4066R with a loader and a, and a cab on it and some, you know, a few goodies that are kind of decking it out. That's insane. So anyway, speaking of the 4066R, in some ways, this tractor, even though it's a decent amount smaller, is comparable to the 4066R. If you look up the loader specs, the three-point specs, the weight of the machine, the hydraulic system, 
this is a comparable machine. It is going to be a little bit narrower, a little bit smaller tires, but again, if you're talking about the work that you can do with it, you're gonna get really close to the same kind of output from this DK6010 as you are with the 4066R, and you're gonna get it for, I'm not gonna say 50% less, but like tens of thousands of dollars less than a 4066R. So. I absolutely love this machine. I think it's great. I've got a 40 acre property out here. Um, use this one all the time. I, I, I just put this pusher back on. It's April right now, but I pushed it back on because I was doing some grading work around this uh, concrete pad and had some dirt go up onto the pad. And I thought, hmm, I could use this with my UHMW edges on there to kind of push all the dirt out of the way, not scrape up the pad and everything else. So that worked out pretty well. So anyway, back to the comparison here. I want to give you a little bit of oversight about these two models. Not too much, but a little bit. So this model here, I'm six foot three on a good day. Okay, about 200 pounds. This model is cozy for me. It's not tight, but there's not a lot of extra room. Um, I do not feel uncomfortable in it, but... Can you hop I... in there and just show us? Huh? Can you yeah, sure, I'll sit in here. I do have a, a good buddy that lives nearby, and he's thinking about a new tractor. And uh, I said, man, you got to check out that CK, CK uh, cab series. He's like, yeah, I sat in one or a Bobcat version, maybe it was, which uh, Cowdy makes the Bobcat tractors right now. He's like, yeah, he's bigger than me. He's 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and I don't know how much he weighs, but he's he's a bigger guy than me. And he said it's just too tight for him, you know? So the DK, I said, well, come sit in the DK then, because there's a decent amount more room in the DK. So I've got this seat back as far as I can go. Again, six foot three, I'm good. So here's what I don't like about, actually, Here's what I don't like about the Cowdy tractors in general. Um, if, okay, well, this is kind of like a safety thing, not a safety thing, right? It's a safety thing in the fact that if I want to get off and unhook an attachment on the back of my tractor, I've got to put it in neutral, I've got to set the parking brake, and then get out. In a lot of ways, I get that. That's a safe practice to do, but it's very annoying. So, and then I get back on the tractor, I've got to take the brake off, put it back in range, all that kind of thing. Um, like, like on the Deers and a lot of the Kubotas, you can just you can just get off the tractor. I mean, some of them you have to put a neutral. I can't think of any of them that you have to put the parking brake on. I could be wrong, but there's less safeties that are required. And so that's a that's a good thing, right? It's an, an annoying thing. I know it's in, there to keep me safe, but it's, and it's not the end of the world, right? But it is something that uh, drives me nuts. Um, and the CK, not really the DK so much, but the CK, this armrest gets in the way. And so you can see these controls that are down here. You have your rock shaft control, or otherwise known as your three point uh, control to raise and lower. And then you've got your remotes right down here, all right? And so I've been doing a lot of grading work with our gravel driveway. And so, you know, I find when this is down, it's comfortable when I wanna use the, the loader joystick, but if I wanna get down here, or back into here, it's kinda of hard to have easy, clear access. Um, again, kinda of nitpicking, but it does shed a little bit of light as to why there's some Coyote models that don't come standard with armrests on them. And so maybe it's just because of where their controls are laid out. And I, I like the armrest. It's not the end of the world, I'm, but I want to tell you guys the good and the bad. So uh, as far as the rest of the cab goes, it's amazing. Love it. Uh, great controls for the uh, the HVAC and everything else. I've, I haven't felt... It's been... We've had 70 degree days multiple times. It's been 80 degrees. Uh, AC works great. Heat works great. Comfortable seat. Suspension seat that's in here. Now we do have some extras, like this, this switch box here. I added a hydraulic top link, I added rear remotes onto the back, a multiplier uh, from Summit Hydraulics. They're an affiliate partner of ours. We talk about them all the time. Use code GWT, save 5%. Oh, we also added a third function from them too. So they make kits that are specific for Coyote, for Deer, for Kubota, for the front and the back, whatever you need, hydraulic top and tilt, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I had another question. You did. I just completely forgot. I had two questions that came up. Oh, visibility, is it it's exactly the same as any other? Oh yeah. yeah, it's very visible. Yeah, I mean, you got all the tractors. I haven't sat in a cab tractor that doesn't have good visibility. I mean, they all have. Yeah. Of course, there's a few blind spots, like small ones here and there, but I mean, I can see the scarifiers down, down below everything else. Oh, one thing I have was gonna mention though. This is a 72 inch land plane on the back. Um, three range transmission here. So when I'm in medium, which is the middle, okay, you have low, 
medium and high. I have bogged this thing down, pull on a full load of gravel, going up that little incline there. Uh, putting it low worked just fine. I like to, to work in medium range, the middle range, if I can. Um, so if I was recommending uh, a land plane for this tractor here, I'd probably recommend the 60 inch as the number one model and say 72 inch will work, but you know, perhaps stay in low range, you know, again, and if you're going to be at higher elevation or dealing with a lot of hills, maybe just stick with the 60 inch so you're not having any kind of degraded performance at all. You know, some of the stuff matters to people, some of it doesn't. Um, some people prefer to work in low range and technically if you're doing heavy work, you should be in low range, but I'm an impatient guy and I like to push the limits too. So anyway, that, uh, that DK6010 over there, we'll go sit in that. I've got a, an eight foot rake on there. And I did start to bog that thing down a little bit when I had it fully loaded with gravel. But I mean, you know, you don't have to push things to the limit and you kind of got to listen to your machine, right? You know that you're going too fast or working it too hard if you're bogging it down a bit. And so some of that stuff is just me pushing the limits, but that's a eight foot rake. I think, does that say eight foot 96 on there, Chris? Did that say 96 inch on there, on that rake? I can't hear you. Oh, you don't have your headphones. He doesn't have his headphones in. He forgot his headphones. headphones. He normally has his headphones what in. What are you asking me? Is that an eight foot rake? Did that say 96 inches on there? Sure looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So that's what I was thinking. But. I'll show you guys just so you don't think I'm making it up. Got the gauge wheels on there. I'd highly recommend those. Used to not think they're a big deal, but they really help prevent the rake from digging in deeper than you want. They've come in really handy. So they are an extra, I don't know, 500 bucks or something like that. But uh, if you're spending the money, I think it's worth it. Okay, so here's the 6010. Again, CK to DK now. And you can see, I think, I feel like I have more room in here. More space, a little bit more space this way, a little bit more space in the front. I don't know. I just do. I don't know if you can tell that on the, on the camera or not. I think that makes sense. It's a bigger machine, so there should be a little bit more space. You know, speaking to the, the one percenters, the folks that are 6'8", that you get emails on once a month on, man, I want I need a small, a small tractor that fits me. Those don't exist. You know, tractor manufacturers aren't making tractors to fit the one percent of the population out there that's, you know, an anomaly and and a giant so it's the only thing you can do really in that kind of case is go with a big tractor i mean the bigger tractors are going to have more space and at some point you're going to run out of space but other than that uh pretty similar layout okay you still have your rock shaft control down here and those levers with the armrests so again maybe that's why they don't include the armrest as standard uh to the best of my knowledge unless something has changed but i think we had to add armrest kits onto this one when i got it but Still added all the same stuff to it. The Summit uh, third function up front, remotes in the back, uh, the hydraulic multiplier, the top hydraulic top link, all that kind of stuff. But an easy, simple layout. Oh, and there's a lot of storage too. You know, you got a spot for, you, know, you can throw your phone there, your phone here, and just tray for gloves, you know, drink, holder. i uh, got another holder over here too. I think that other, the, the CK had an extra cup holder on there as well. So a lot of storage space in here, you know, a decent toolbox that's on the back somewhere. I don't know where the toolbox is. Oh yeah, there it is. Um, on there. Oh, and one of the things I like about the Coyotes over the Kubotas is the twin touch pedal. Okay. So uh, Kubota has the, the rocker pedal or the treadle pedal while Coyote is similar to deer and a lot of others that just has a twin touch on there, okay? I believe we need to call it the side-by-side. Side-by-side. This twin touch might be a registered trademark <laughs> of John Deere. Yeah, pro probably so. The twin touch, side-by-side. -side <laughs> so anyway, um, one of the differences, though, between the CK and the DK, you have your brake over on this side on the DK, but on the CK, it's over here. I don't like that. I, I wish it was over here. I don't know why they changed that on the CK to the DK. I'm not sure what would have driven that change. Uh, we also have a Coyote NS series, an NS6010 that's at our, our shop, um, our, our business, our, our warehouse out there. So if we have to 
do any mowing or lifting out in a lot or whatever else. It's just another tractor that we can kind of deck out and show people when it's there and all the different things that it can do as well. But other than that, um, you're going to lift more, of course. There's a lot of obvious things that I don't want to bore you with. You're going to do you're going to do more with a bigger tractor, right? That that should go without saying. Uh, these these up here are for triangles, the safety triangles, but I do store uh, these machines on occasion in my garage uh, up at the house, and that's got an eight foot door on it. With the triangles on there, they don't fit. So I took those off. I, I'm trying to find a way to, well, I can tell it was hard for them, for Coyote to find a spot to put it just because of where everything's going on, the window opening, all that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to figure out a, a spot where I can put that triangle so it doesn't block the, the side view mirror, so it doesn't block the window, so it doesn't hit the garage door, all that kind of stuff. It's, I'm gonna have to have another bracket fabricated, but I just haven't figured that part out. But that's a, that's a unique, small problem. Um, fuel tanks are down here, which is nice. Well, actually, where is that one at? I thought that the DK series is down there. I guess I haven't filled this one up with fuel yet. I've got 10 hours on this one. I've got 20 some on that one. Oh, it's right here in the back. That's right. I knew that. I have filled this one up actually. That's right hmm. back there. That's more unusual. Uh, like. The open stations have it like that too. Hmm. Um, a lot of the deers have, like the 4066R, the, the fuel fill is right. Yeah, it's off to the side at least. Yeah, it's in the fender, but I, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's right there. But. Show them a look at that break over here on this side, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can't see anything through this window. <laughs> There's that fragile sticker. Yeah. Wow, you're just playing with fire there. Oh, I gotta shut it. So I guess we might as well address that. One of the other things, I don't... I don't think that this is a coyote issue i think that this is a cab tractor issue so i shattered the passenger side door on this tractor here the other door over there shattered it i was actually just right right there i was loading up a uh a supplier with some demo equipment that i had i was just he was taking it back after i was done with it and i literally was in the tractor i opened the door to ask him which piece of equipment he wanted to load next and said okay close the door like I've done every time on a tractor, and it just shattered. Just shattered, like psh, all glass all over me, all over the place. So I posted some videos on that, you know, and I had a lot of feedback from folks all over the all over the place, right? I mean, that's what you get for buying a Chinese tractor, which it's, it's not a Chinese tractor. Um, but then a lot of other folks that said, yeah, that's happened to my Deer, that's happened to my Kubota, that's happened to my Case, that's happened to my Mahindra, that's happened to every brand that's out there. Okay, so that's not just something that's relegated to Coyote. Had some other folks, though, say that there's a recall out there on Coyotes because this happens. And so I talked to a Coyote dealer, I talked to a Coyote territory rep, and I talked to uh, a customer service representative at Coyote Corporation. Talked to all three of them. None of them know anything about a recall that's going on out there. And the dealer had heard of glass breaking before but not all the time but i have never had glass break i've heard of it as well so it's one of those things that i think is a risk if you're going to get a cab tractor instead of an open station i obviously have these two cab tractors i have a big kubota cab tractor i have a cab john deere 333g most of my machines these days are cab tractors and it's because of situations like this right it's it's raining it's cold if you're gonna be comfortable, you're gonna get a lot more work done on for a lot longer amount of time on a lot more days and a lot more weather conditions that are out there. When you're pushing snow in the winter time, I have over 2,000 foot of uh, drive plus huge parking pads here and, and up at my house that I need to clear. It takes me, I think it was taking me about two hours to clear all of that with the pusher, which is pretty good, but to sit out in 15 degree weather versus being nice and comfortable listening to a audiobook or some music I'll take that every time and so for the plus that door the machine's under warranty right now and it was covered so there was there's was no cost as far as that goes not to say down the road there won't be if it happened again but I've had a lot of cab machines 
I've had one door break ever. It's just a risk that I think comes along with owning a machine. If you did have to pay for it, because it's out of warranty, and you're comparing it to a John Deere, you're still way ahead. Oh yeah. Cost. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't even know how much it would cost, but say it cost a thousand bucks. I mean, you could shatter your door probably twenty or twenty-five times, maybe more than that, just to break even with deer. So you know, you got to look at at things in the in the grand the grand scale. Okay. So what do I think these are each good for? Let's start with the CK. Now, if you're looking at a John Deere. 2038R, maybe a 2032R. If you're looking at a Kubota um, B2650, LX 3310, LX 4010, those kinds of models, then this is what I would look at. I'd look at this as getting more capability than those machines, but in a similar footprint, all right? And for either the same amount of money or less money. So you're getting more value more, normally quite a bit more value uh, for the money with a Coyote. And Coyote has over 450 dealers in the U.S. and they're, if not the fastest, one of the fastest growing manufacturers in the U.S. as well. So, you know, they're not going to have as many dealers as Deer or Kubota, but I did a survey not that long ago, sometime within the last year, and it was something like 80 plus percent of folks do their own service anyway. And you can buy parts for any manufacturer online, okay? And if you're going to you're in the 80% plus of folks that do your own service and you buy your parts online and just have them shipped to you, you know, you're eliminating most of the trips to the dealer. And if you do have a warranty issue that you have to take it in for, well, that's just a, that's a generally a pretty rare thing to happen. Okay. I'm not going to say it never happens, but you know, so bear that in mind and weigh that against if you think the, the cost trade off is worth it versus the capability. Even if you're looking at the John Deere 3039R, 3046R, Kubota, Grand L 3560, Grand L 4060, again, not quite as capable, but if you don't need all of that capability and you want something close for a lot less money, check it out, okay? Now, on the Coyote DK, if you're looking at the John Deere 4 Series in general, okay, the 4044Rs, 4066Rs, 4044Ms, 4066Ms, or the Kubota Grandel 5460, Grandel 6060, wonderful machines, absolutely love them. But if you want to try to save some money, because budget's a concern for most folks, give a good hard look to these Coyote DK tractors. Even if you want to step up to the Coyote NS or the NX, you know, it's, they have an NS and an NX right now. Rumor is, I, I have no, no idea if this is credible or not, but the NX and the NS are so similar. Rumor is that the NS is going to just wind up replacing the NX series, which is a step up, okay? If you looked at the frame size of the NS and the NX, it's going to be basically the same frame size, tires, width, length, all that kind of stuff as the the John Deere 4 Series and the Kubota Large Grand L Series. So, and again, either one, you're going to be paying less money for similar or more capability. So if you pay less and get more, what is that? There's a, <laughs> there's some store that has that as a slogan. I don't know what it is. Buy less, pay more? Something like that. That's backwards, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. No, get, get more, pay less, buy, buy more, more. Or, Get more. Was it pay, pay less. less shoes? Oh, pay less shoes. Yeah, that's a good comparison there. I don't know if that's the, the best comparison or not, but uh, you know, I've had no issues uh, with these tractors, or we've probably had I don't know 20, 25 Coyote tractors in the last six months or so, and um, gosh, I don't think we've had a single issue with any of them that I can think of. You know, all for resale. We we sell these tractors, so we buy lightly used. Sometimes just demo coyotes. That's what we do with John Deere Kubota too. So we buy a lot of low hour used tractors and resell them. And on occasion, I'll get a TYM or an LS or something else too. I don't think those are bad tractors. I, I think that as they continue to grow and, and, and uh, their networks get bigger as well, I'll, I'll probably delve into those models more. Part of it is that there's just not nearly as much 
in the resale market. So if you look, if you're shopping for a deer or a Kubota, you're gonna see that there's just way more inventory that's out there to buy versus Coyote, LS, TOM, and et cetera. There, there's just not as many, so it's harder to get those machines too. Um, and so if you're looking for me, well, you too, if you're looking for good values, then it's just, it just takes longer to find those good values versus the, the sheer quantity, the volume of deer and Kubota that's out there. So anyway, that's a comparison. You can see the physical, the physical dimensions too, the physical look at it, you know, a bit bigger. Both great machines. For 40 acres like what we have here, either machine will work. But for me, I would spring for the DK over the CK. If you had 5, 10, 15, maybe 20 acres, the CK, you could get by with that. Um, it, you're not going to go wrong with the DK by any means. But if you're, again, if you're just thinking you want to save some money, you know, because the tractor is going to cost, you know, there's going to be cost difference there, but the t attachments too, if you're going to buy a smaller tractor, then the attachments are cheaper as well because they're smaller too. So, um, but if you're going to spring for it, you know, the DK is, is hard to beat. So at a certain point, you're overkill. Have I found, well, I guess maybe that 105 horsepower Kubota is maybe overkill here. I mean, not, it depends what you're doing. Yeah, it does depend on what you're doing. I mean, it's, it can be hard to find overkill. If you have a one acre lot, then a hundred horsepower tractor is overkill, you know, but you got to go pretty extreme. I mean, if you got space to get through, if you don't have tight uh, navigation, then I think it's just about how quick do you want to get your stuff done? Yeah, well, and if you're not like going to be on your lawn where you're not going to, you don't want to damage it, you yeah, know. You don't really use these over on your lawn. So no, I don't, think about I don't but I would use, I'd use either one on the lawn, um, but you'd want to pick your days, right? I mean, you start to get the heavier tractors and you want to pick your days, not turn tight, all that kind of thing too, and, and drive over the same spot over and over. So. Shed or a garage that can hold, hold mm -hmm. it if you can, you just get bigger and bigger. Anyway, folks, so been a common question folks are asking about these tractors so i thought i'd share my my thoughts on it but if you own one of these machines or if you're if you've been thinking about it or you're making a decision do us a favor and help other folks out that are going to watch this leave a comment down below with what your takeaways were or other considerations that i didn't talk about because i'm sure i missed a whole pile of stuff well this is just one guy's opinion okay that has the opportunity to own both these tractors at the same time and wanted to share it with you to help make your life a little bit easier. Now, all the attachments that you see on the front and the back of these tractors, and you know, like that stuff sitting behind there, that's all my stuff I use out here, but that's what we do. We sell tractor attachments, and we ship them nationwide. You go to goodworkstractors.com. If you know what size you need, just go ahead and add it to your cart, check out, and we'll get it shipped to you. If you don't know what you need, just shoot us an email let us know what tractor you have, your make, your model. If you have a skid steer quick attach, a John Deere quick attach, whatever information you provide will help us out. And then we will get you set up with the right size, the right connection. We'll help you out. We'll get you set up. So we call it the worry-free guarantee, okay? Because if you email us, ask for a recommendation, and then take the recommendation, we're going to guarantee it's going to work for you, okay? If you don't email us, how can we guarantee that? because we don't know. So anyway, check that out, goodworkstractors.com. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already, and we will see you next time around. Thanks for stopping by.